OK, so I'm going to go in and open up my Zentangle or my Mandela, and I'm also going to open up my color scheme. File and open. So you've already learned how to crop and rotate if needed. But now what we're going to do is I'm going to be using this color scheme and painting in this Mandela with the color scheme. So what we need to do is talk about what tools to use for that. So if you have a really clean drawing, you might be able to use the paint bucket tool, which just dumps in colors into certain areas. So we can try that. And if it doesn't work for some areas, we might have to clean things up. So for this, you can see there's like little eraser marks. We might have to go in and clean up, but let's just see how it looks. So first off, I want to get my colors over here into my swatches. So if you don't see color or swatches here, what you want to do is go up to window at the top here and go down and find your swatches and then they should pop up. And then over here, what you're looking for is the eyedropper tool. So um, it's right here or it's I if you just press I on your keyboard. I like to use my key commands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and press I and I'm going to sample click each color and you can see it goes right into my swatches. Like so. And then I can use these colors once I click back up here to my drawing. I can use the swatches that are above here. You can also if you click on a color, if you go to the color tab or if you double click over here on your lower left swatch, you can grab light and dark variations of that same color. So just because you found a color palette that has like four or five colors, it doesn't mean you're stuck with those. You could use light tints or dark shades of that color as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is go in and I have a paintbrush here. I'm mostly going to be using my paintbrush, my eyedropper and my paint bucket tool. So if I need to clean anything up, I'm going to zoom in. Control plus zooms in. Control minus zooms out. Control zero gets you to full screen. Um, but so if you have any spots on your page or things you need to clean up, I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and sample the color white because it's not exactly a pure white. So I'm going to just try to clean it up with a paintbrush. So um, eyedropper tool, sample the background, and then B on your keyboard goes to your brush. And then make sure your cap locks is turned off. And if it is, you can see your brush size. If the cap locks is on, you can't see the brush size. But up at the top here, you can change your brush size. And honestly, I like to use the key commands for this. So next to the P on your keyboard, you have left and right brackets. Let me click off of this, sorry. And then if so, if I go here and I use my left bracket on my keyboard, it'll make my brush smaller. My right bracket will make it bigger. Oopsie daisy. Let's see, something's going weird with this. I'm going to go back. Maybe I'm on the wrong tool. Sometimes, like my computer got a little glitchy. Sometimes you'll need to like close Photoshop and restart it if it does something weird. You can also press Control Z to step back, which is really helpful as well. So my Photoshop is being very glitchy. The paintbrush went all over the place. So I have to exit it. I'm just going to click no because I haven't done anything yet. And then I'm going to go and open Photoshop again. Probably good that this happened while I'm showing you because it might happen to you. <laughs> so if it's being weird and a tool's not working, just close Photoshop and reopen it. And then we'll talk about how to save your file too. So if you have started something, um, it doesn't get lost. OK, so I'm going to go back in and go to open up. Oh, and you know what? They're just sitting right here, so I'll grab that. And file open. And let's see, my color palette might still be there. Yeah, it's already it's already there still. So just reopening it will help. So now I bet you my brush will work. Yep, it does. I pressed I and sampled it, and I'm using the brackets on my keyboard to help clean things up. So I just might need to clean up little things. Or if while I'm painting, I notice little gaps, like I think this was from before. Um, I could go in and I can sample the black. And go back to my brush and make my brush really tiny and I could fill in these gaps like I could paint them back in if needed. Like I can just kind of fix that up. OK, because uh, ideally you want not to have little spaces and gaps because we if we can just to make things easier, we'll use the 
paint bucket tool, which is right here. You might have to, it's usually like within the gradient tools. You might have to long press on this box gradient and then scroll down underneath it is the paint bucket tool. So watch with the paint bucket tool, super easy. You just click on the color and you dump it into these areas. Oops, you don't want to go on the black line though. Control Z to undo if you make a mistake. So I'm always zooming in and out. Control plus, control minus. Um, when I zoom in, if I use my two fingers on my trackpad, I can like move the um I can move things around too. And then if I double click on this color, oops, over here, I can get like a lighter variation. First, like if I want to use like the same color palette, which I, you do, you want to keep it consistent, but like you might need to change it up, you know, and do a little bit lighter version to get a couple extra colors. You can do that, but I'm just going to click through and, you know, fill in these areas. When, before you even start working, you probably want to save this. So file, save as, and we're going to save this as a JPEG is totally fine. Um, and just save it with your name. Sometimes it'll want to save as a Photoshop file. That's fine too for now. So just make sure you save it. So as you work, um, if it crashes, your work doesn't get lost. So if I, I just always drag this option to the highest quality. So as I work and I fill this in, I'm going to press Control S. We'll save it every now and then. It does a pretty good job of saving it um, on its own. So I just, if you have little shapes next to each other, I wouldn't fill them in at all the same color. I would go in and like get different, you know, varieties. So like get lighter and lighter and lighter. You know, try to make things have contrast that are next to each other so that, you know, they kind of pop and they have a nice um, just gradient of colors fading from one color to the next. So I would go in and kind of just balance the colors throughout. 